All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's session for Innovate to Build. My name is Misty Scott, and I am pleased to be your moderator. We've got some great guests today. Um, we've got John Sayer. He is the technical marketing manager for Autodesk. And we also have Andrew Manzi, who is also a technical marketing manager for Autodesk for the session Unlock the Power of AI and Machine Learning in AutoCAD. All right, I'll go ahead and get things rolling. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone to uh, this webinar on uh, unlocking the power of AI and machine learning in AutoCAD. Um, before we get going, uh, I'd just like you to um, take a look at this uh, safe harbor statement. Um, so in today's presentation, we may make statements regarding uh, future events and development efforts for our products and services. Um, uh, but um, don't base anything you see today for uh, any, any purchasing uh, decisions. So um, today's speakers. Uh, well, one of them is me, uh, Andrew Manzi. Uh, my background is in uh, structural engineering. I've um, I've held quite a few different jobs in structural and civil engineering in, in the past. And like most of us, I, I grew up with AutoCAD. Um, and I've been here um, at Autodesk for approximately uh, 10 years. Um, my colleague, John Sayer, um, he's also a technical marketing manager. Um, uh, John's been with uh, with Autodesk about uh, about nine years, and he's a, a very experienced um, civil engineer. Okay, so just to save on the bandwidth, I'm going to I'm going to turn off my uh, turn off my video now. But I'm still going to be here. Okay, so what are we going to be um, talking about today? So what I'm going to do is. Um, First of all, I just want to talk a little bit about um, AI and machine learning. There's a, there's a lot of that um, swirling around in the in the media at the moment. Um, I'm not really sure if most people really know what it what it actually is. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about that, and then we're going to we're going to nip into some of the actual features in AutoCAD that uh, utilize those types of different technologies. Um, so we'll be looking at um, smart blocks. So there's there's two two functions there, place and replace, uh, to look at. Um, there's a macro advisor, which we can also look at. And then at that point, John's going to take over and he's going to show you some markup import and markup assist, um, and some stuff for the Autodesk Autodesk assistants, which I I think he's going to um, he's going to do live for you, which could be interesting. Okay, so um, AI and machine learning. Okay, so um, what's it what's it going to do for us? Um, what's it going? How's it going to sort of like revolutionise uh, what we do? Uh, and I think it will do. Um, so, as we know, computers are um, they're good at spotting patterns in huge amounts of data, and uh, more and more. You know, we're getting access to these large data sets and, um, you know, huge uh, amounts of data is now uh, becoming available to us. And processing um, these large data sets um, cuts through a lot of the complexity, um, which has allowed us to, to do um, a lot more problem solving much faster uh, and to innovate quickly. Um, especially in these AEC and uh, sort of media and entertainment uh, industries that we're working with at the moment. Um, why use AI? Well, um, data and AI are, are complementary. Um, and as we get more data to work on, um, the, AI, the AI gets better. Okay, so it's gonna help us um, generating insights um, obviously, automating tasks and uh, aug augmenting uh, design iterations. So being able to run through all those iterations, 
much much faster to get to the um or to get to a better design answer i think okay uh now um ai um is not just one thing there's there's lots lots of different types of ai um and, and we employ um all of these in in various ways in in various applications um so machine learning um is a it's, it's a type of type of ai that enables the computer to, to to learn and make decisions um based on the the large amounts of data um that it's being presented with um without being i suppose the, the key thing is without being explicitly programmed to do so so it's um it's uh sort of making its own decisions so i think that's probably the one that people most under, most think of as um artificial intelligence um, um deep learning is very very closely tied to um machine learning and uses slightly different algorithms um to um to to, to get to the answer um generative ai um is probably the one that we're most familiar with um if you're if you're uh, watching uh, this webinar you're probably interested in ai and uh, you've probably used chat gpt you must have done that is basically generative ai okay so that's that's uh, that's what we also use and then uh generative design is um is where we have uh, a number of algorithms and we feed it some uh, parameters uh, and then give it the data um and, and it will work out the uh you know go through lots and lots of iterations based on those parameters it given and, and come up with the uh come up with some answers okay so sort of um sort of covered this uh in a small way um anyway so the the, the benefits of ai obviously automation um we can get uh, we can get these these algorithms and systems to um, to to do a lot of repetitive work for us, um, automating those steps that that would have take you know, much much longer. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, generative AI and uh, generative design here, where you can um, you can iterate, you know, thousands of times, um, completely automatically, where where previously you know, we would have, we would have had to have done that manually, um, and um, by able to do those uh, all, all those extra steps completely automatically, we get to a, a better, more refined um, answer. Um, as far as analysis is concerned, I think this is this is where um, you know we're, we're faced with a, a huge amount of data. Um, it's really about not being able to see the wood for the trees. Um, so the AI can can help us, um, as it says there, sift through all that data um, and try and understand uh, really what's happening. And uh, so so that's how um, AI can help us with uh, the, the analysis of, of, of large data sets. Um, and then augmentation at the bottom there, um, just being able to in, enhance um, problem solving. Um, and being able to explore um, uh, different options um, much, much, much faster and with with more accuracy. Okay, so that's sort of generalizing about AI a little bit. Um, but what about Autodesk? What are we doing? Uh, what are we doing with with AI? Well, although AI has been, um, it is a uh, a big topic at the moment. Um, it may surprise some people to to, to realise that we've, we've been working with AI for um, ten plus years now, incorporating um, features into into products. But we we may not we not we may not surface them as AI features. Um, but but we have been using them. Um, so uh, in, in the AEC space, um, AutoCAD has has had quite a few features. Um, 
which have been using AI either in the in, in the workings of the product or have been uh, used AI to in, in the creation of a, of a function. Um, so we have some smart, smart block functionality and markup assist um, in AutoCAD. Um, Civil 3D has um, drainage design, which is based on AI. Uh, Former has predictive analysis, and the construction cloud has construction analytics, all, all using um, AI in some way, shape, or form. Um, uh, same with the manufacturing, um, Fusion um, has some AI capabilities, and then in the media and entertainment, Flame and Maya both have um, uh, functionality based on uh, based on AI. Okay, so let's let's talk about some specifics uh, in AutoCAD. Um, that's why we're here. So the first one I want to talk about is the uh, uh, place and replace uh, functionality. So um, what this is going to do for us is it is going to um, it is going to when we, when we start the command it's going to look um, at what is already placed inside uh, a particular drawing um, and then when we when we go to place a particular block um, it's going to try to identify possible uh, positions rotations and even scales of this new block insertion and place it automatically for us um, as we as as we hope we were we wanting it to be so um, it's available from uh, a number of places uh, in the interface um, and of course if we uh, if we if we don't if we don't agree with what it's producing we can we can overwrite it um, but what it will be doing is it will um, it will look for many different patterns. So you, you may have three, four, five different ways that a particular block has been uh, inserted, and it will it will look at those, and then you'll be able to um, tab between them. So it will it will reveal these different patterns to you, and you can you can select one, and it will it will insert based on that. OK, so we'll look at that in a second. Um, and then the other half of uh, this particular functionality is the block replacement. OK, so um, a number of ways you can get access to this as well. Um, but it's a, it's a new command, be replace. And what it's going to do, it's going to it's going to look at um, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's gonna look at the, the block that you're, you're saying that you want to replace. Um, and then it's going to look at your library and then think what what is the possible replacement for this that the user is going to be looking for. OK, so it's going to be looking for like similar shapes, similar names, things like that. And it's going to present some options for you and you can select one of these options and it will replace the, the block um, automatically and it will um, It'll rotate it and scale it uh, appropriately. Okay, so let's have um, let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so as we see here, we've got a um, we've got a layout of um, offices here with uh, tables and chairs. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull in um, another desk, and it's going to scale and position itself. Um, automatically. So you can see, oh, it's clicked in there. So I've not used snaps at all. Um, it's just done it all by itself. That's very clever. So how does it actually work? So let's maybe look at pulling one of those chairs in. So if I grab a chair and pull that across, it's going to look for those existing patterns, you see. So it's looking at those existing chairs. How might that work? And then you can see the lines it's presenting you with, and it automatically scales and puts it in. Now, if it's not in the right place, you can um, press control and you can see it's working through those different patterns that it's already identified and it will plug the uh, plug the block in. And then you can continue pulling those different components in and it's all the time looking for these patterns to automatically um, 
plug stuff in for you in the right place and the right scale, right rotation. Um, and it also works when you're copying and moving stuff as well. Like so. Okay. So that, that's how it works. It's, it's, it's very simple in its operation, but super powerful. Okay. So let's have a look at um, another couple of examples of, of where that might work. So on this, on this bridge deck, for instance, um, if I just zoom in here, I'm going to grab this uh, barrier and you can see it's automatically scaling and positioning because I, I may have done something similar to this already in the drawing. So that's how it's done it. Um, and then if I want to replace something, you'll see it's suggesting some alternatives there. And then I can ask it to uh, replace it with that. And it's automatically, again, scaled, put it in the right location. Um, and, ro and rotation automatically. So I haven't had to interact with that other than say, replace it. And then one last uh, one last example of this. Um, so I'm going to select uh, an eye girder uh, from, from the library and you see it's gonna pull it in, but it's gonna scale it up and rotate it. And you can see it's always trying to find those patterns So it makes it a lot easier to um, to to plug these in, like so. And then, if we want to, um, if we want to replace uh, one of these with a something that's similar but it's not the same, um, I can say uh, replace this block, please. And then it's going to pop up some alternatives. You can see there's three suggested blocks at the top that it thought might be appropriate. It might be what I was looking for. Um, and then same again. So that's on an individual basis. And this one um, is on a, a multiple basis like that. So you can see it's 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 much quicker way of um, inserting and um, replacing blocks. And there's a in the replacement, there's a there's a there's a good chance that one of the, the suggestions is uh, is is what you're after. Okay. Okay, so that is um that's uh, sort of smart blocks. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the uh, to the next one, um, and this has to do with the uh, the my insights uh, functionality, um, specifically the macro advisor. Okay, so this is about um, in product um, insight delivery. So we're probably familiar with the um, my insights dashboard on the left hand side where it's aggregating um the you know the, the view of you know, how you're how you're using um how you're using autocad okay but the macro advisor is actually going to be working in in the in the product with you and it's going to it's going to give you some advice in your workflow so actually as you're using the the product and what it's going to do is it's going to uh, suggest based on your usage um, macros uh, that you can that you can use um, to, to substitute your uh, your your workflow that you that you that you've just been carrying in okay so um there's a there's a back end that is taking the the data, so it's taking your your usage data and 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 the feedback that you're giving to to AutoCAD. It's going to go through a process and then it's going to suggest um, macros that are going to make your life easier. Okay, so that that's that's what it's trying to do. So I've got a a quick video to show you here on this. So if you can imagine, uh, we've got a table a round table here and um and a uh, and, and a chair and we we want to rotate this around so distribute those around there now you can maybe use array or something like this but in this case this person is going to be um uh, copy or moving and rotating um all the way around so we'll see how um how they're going to be doing that so 
um, with sort of grabbing hold of it and saying copy, then we're snapping to that point there, then we're cancelling, then we're selecting that, and then we're rotating. Okay, and then there we, we then we're going to repeat that all the way around. Um, it's a, it's a little bit uh, long winded. Okay, so as soon as we've done that, we can see there's a new suggestion um, for a macro that might might work this might work be better for us. And you can see it's automatically pulled up this macro called copy rotate previous. Okay, um, and so what it's done is it's seen what you've you've uh, it's seen what you've uh, you've carried out. It's then looking to see if there's a, a macro that may do that for us. And then there's a, there's a very long list of um, of macros that it is going to select from. OK, and these have uh, these have been assembled and sort of like curated, if you like, using um, AI. And then it's using some AI to, um, to to get the feedback and then provide that um, uh, that list of possible macros and then obviously you can you can save those and then you can see it's a lot easier to use we use the macro instead um copy rotate previous just move it there you go there's a lot there's a lot less clicks um for that and so that's a that's a, that's a that's a lot better and um obviously it's a macro so you you can you can edit and change it as much as you want, add it to the add it to the ribbon and all all, all, the, all the other things that you can do with uh, with macros. Okay, um, but the key the key takeaway here is that it's looking at what you're doing and it's going to suggest um, macros that are going to make your life easier. Okay, that's 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 basically what it's doing. Okay, so that's the 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 two that I'm going to describe. Um, I'm now going to uh, hand over to my colleague, John Sayer, who's going to take us through uh, another couple of um, interesting features. What I'm going to take you through is the Markup Import and Markup Assist. All right, and I am going to show this live. Uh, I'm going to start with the iPad and talk about kind of a workflow. Um Maybe a project manager is taking a look at a drawing that is in the construction cloud. So they're able to actually use the AutoCAD app that is in uh, the, it's in the iPad or well, it's on the iPad and uh, they can, they can actually physically mark up uh, pages and then take a, a photo or a snapshot with the iPad and push that back out to the cloud in what's called a trace and then we can take a look at it inside of AutoCAD and with uh, AI it'll it'll look at the markups that they made and we can start to work with them a little bit all right so it converts them and and um and makes them easy to use easy to update so what is markup import markup assist so it originally was introduced in 2023 that was actually a question that someone had earlier was can you use these AI functions? Um, is it only in 2024? Some of them are, um, but the markup import markup assist was introduced in 2023. So markup assist also can detect and identify markups in PDFs. So I was talking about being able to use the iPad and the AutoCAD app on the iPad to uh, work with this functionality. You can also just have a PDF uh, that was maybe marked up in Adobe or um, another software. And you can, you, it, it'll bring that PDF in and overlay on top of your drawing also. The, uh, where you find the markup assist icon is on the trace toolbar. And um, that indicates when the markup assist is in process of detecting the markup. And we're going to be using this trace toolbar right here today. And this is what we're talking about here. You can see it once you tell the trace to go to the back then it starts to look for the different markups. Now, what is it looking at for in mark with markup assist? All right. Um, it will replace or update existing text with text from the markup. All right. So after clicking on a text markup, you'll see an update 
uh, update existing text selection. All right, that's an option that's on there in the markup assist dialog box alongside insert as M text and insert as an M leader. All right, so you get several different options to work with it. Um, you can use update update existing text to replace or amend existing text in the drawing with text from the imported markup. All right. So that's the one of the first things you can do. Markup assist recognizes text which is crossed out. So if you if you want to take a comment that well, if you want to make a comment on something um, where you want to delete it, right? Or you want to tell them whoever you're is going to be making the adjustments to these markups, you want them to delete it, then you can put an X on it. Okay. And it understands that that's that's uh that that is a uh oh good grief i've had a uh what is that called oh i'll get to it here in a minute i'm going to show you um but there's a selection all right that that you can pick that and it understands that you want to get rid of that and you want to change that text because it is crossed out okay and i'll you'll see that option here in just a little bit um you can display associated pdf text comments so if you've got embedded text comments inside of a PDF, you can actually add those to text that's in your uh, AutoCAD drawing, all right? Which is very, very handy. You can control the transparency of the individual markups so we can fade them back, fade the markups back and bring them back forward. So this is a great way for whoever is making the markups to know that for sure they have made the markups that they need to. So I... I, I Andy, when he introduced me, he said that I'd, I'd been in the business for around 29 years. I I have been on the end of getting a, a pile of plans that were marked up that I needed to go through and make the changes to the plans. And one part of that is making sure that you get all of them, right? So you had to highlight them or you, you had a certain system. I'm sure everybody's system is different. But you had a way of making sure that those markups were made. And this is a great way to do that because it's a digital record of it. Also, you can select AutoCAD objects within a markup boundary. All right. Um, so when you use any command that prompts like select objects, you can click or you can click on there'll be a blue highlighted border of the markup assist boundary and you can select the AutoCAD objects within it. You can detect instruction text all right so what that means is like move copy or delete and you're going to see today an example it's going to say remove all right i think it says remove let me look back here yes it says remove so it'll it'll build a boundary around that word uh using ai and all i'll have to do is click on that and it'll automatically start the erase command so i can erase whatever i need to inside the drawing Move, copy, delete. I mean, there's there's a lot of different um, instruction text that you can give it. Now, one thing I need to kind of be clear on is that Markup Assist is, is not available in AutoCAD LT, all right? Um, we can see markups in the web app, all right? So the web app for AutoCAD, if you've opened it up before, um, you can you can see the markups in there. Uh, but it doesn't have the markup assist. So you can just see the overlay basically. And it's the same thing with the app that's inside of the the iPad. So with uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and see about, seeing if we can do this live. So it's going to take me just a second here to get my iPad enabled. So let's see. I can show you AutoCAD. How about that? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to do my best to uh, be loud enough here. My microphone's a little bit away or a little, little bit of a distance. But what we're going to do here is we're going to actually open up the, the AutoCAD file that, that uh, the markup was made from. Okay. So a little bit of a scenario here before we, we get started. Say a project manager has got a pile of markups that he's gone through, he or she's gone through, and they made red lines, okay? So um, they've used a, a magic marker, a red magic Sharpie, or magic marker, or a Sharpie, or a red pen, something, and they've made markups for the plan set, all right? Now, um, 
a lot of times they just would hand that over to the CAD operator or the, the CAD tech or whoever. Well, what they can do now is they can actually, um, they can use this tool right here, traces, and they can import the markup, all right? Now, what we're going to do is we're actually gonna take a photo of the marked up plan. Now, uh, don't, don't laugh at my marked up plan. I've seen much, much worse uh, uh, well, grammar and uh, handwriting ability um, in, in things that I've, I've worked on in the past. So if you've ever done changes before, you know that you get all kinds of crazy stuff that's on there. So what we would do is just hit import markup and select the camera, all right? And then we would bring it up above and let it kind of focus on the markup itself and take that picture, all right? Now, once you have that selected, you can you can actually move the border up just a little bit, make it a little bit uh, where it captures exactly what it needs to, and I can hit keep the scan. Now, once I hit keep the scan, I can select save, and it's going to save that, that scan on top of this drawing, okay? Because this is the actual drawing that that was done using or uh, using AutoCAD to 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 describe everything that's on here. So it's just being pulled from the construction cloud. Now, once this is here, it's going to ask me. You can see down here at the bottom it says import markup. Do I want to accept the placement? All right, I'm just going to hit enter for yes. All right, and then I will close the trace. All right, because I want to look at this inside of AutoCAD. Um, and if I'm a project manager and I'm in an airport or I'm at a different location or a hotel room or something, I may have several of these that I would scan and push up. Now, because these traces get saved to the drawing, and I'll go ahead and hit save here, all right? Because they get saved to the drawing, you can have as, I mean, you can have as many of these traces as you want. So, if you have multiple uh, revolutions of, of red lines, then it just continues to, to add those in, right? Um, that was another thing that we, we happened to notice whenever we do red lines in the past is that you always had a couple different uh, times that you got to do them. So um, you can just continue to add to it. Now, I did say... I did say that we would look at that. You could take a look at these inside the web app. So I am going to do this. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my iPad. All right. And I'm going to share my screen again. All right. Andy, you can see my screen again. I can, sir. All right. So I have opened up the same drawing. All right inside of uh inside of the web app all right you just go to web.autocad.com and you can open that drawing now you're not seeing a trace on top of this right this second all right but i can i can close that and i can actually just type in trace all right here in the command line and it brings it up and i can select a trace to lay on top now i don't have any of the AI capabilities here, just like I don't inside of the AutoCAD app, but I can click back and forth uh, to send the trace to the back or bring it to the front. And if I want, you know, if it's a remove, right, and I want to delete that, I can. Um, because, I mean, this is, you have the erase command here inside of the, the web app. Um, if I know the numbers to, for the 50 year event, I can fix that. If I want to fix this text, I can fix that. I can move things around and then I can save just like I would inside of regular AutoCAD. All right. But what I want to do is I want to open this drawing in AutoCAD. This is AutoCAD 2024. All right. And I have several traces in here. This trace 13 is the one that we just pulled in. All right. So I just would pick that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to start over. I, I apologize. That came up because I've been using this today. 
So where do you find that trace command? All right. So you go to collaboration and you select the traces palette. All right. Now, if you had a PDF, you could select markup import. All right. And you would be able to select that PDF and it would overlay um, right on top where it needed to be. And then you could see the, the, the information that they had put on there in red. All right. So I'm going to select this trace 13. All right. And you can see it's kind of faded back. I can see the, the red lines uh, very nicely, but I want to select this button right here. I want to send it to the back, all right? And then that shows this button here. Remember I talked about this um, whenever I was in the PowerPoint, detecting the markup objects. If that's got the, a little blue circle and spinning, it's looking for those objects, okay? Now, it's used AI to find the red lines, all right, to find the markups and gives us some, some things that we can do with them. So if I want to, um, this says remove. Remember I said that if it said keywords like or instruction words, like remove or copy or whatever, then I can hover over that and select it. And it automatically, look what it did. It automatically kicked me right into an erase command and I can erase everything here. All right, and then I've done it. Once you do that, it it basically, sorry about that, it basically fades it, all right? So it fades it back. So remember me talking about being able to keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done? Well, if it's faded back, you know you've done it. So it, it fades that back. I can select this, this object too, all right, which is just the revision cloud that I, I wrote or I did with the uh, the red markup and I can fade that back also. That way I know I'm completely done. All right. So let's jump up and see uh, something else we can do. So uh, they, they said that they want this uh, proposed seven foot wide berm to replace uh, the text that's here. So I can select that markup and with markup assist, it's going to look at it. Now, Sometimes, and Andy and I talked about this, is my the handwriting that folks, people get in a hurry, right? Um, and they have some, some handwriting that sometimes things can't be read correctly, all right? So in this particular instance, there needs to be a, a dot. That's a seven foot. It's 7.0. So you can change it, all right? So I can change it to 7.0 here. All right, and then I can say, you know what? I want to update the existing text and I can select the text object and notice I have a pin, replace, select a strike through. That's what I was talking about earlier when it said you could you could use an X and mark out something and then uh, that's that would be considered a strike through. But we're just going to replace this text. So I can uh, either select replace here and it replaces it and I'm done, and it fades it back, all right? Now, I can also, uh, for this particular uh, markup, it needs to say berm width varies, all right? And that's that looks terrible. Let's see what it gives us for that. It says berm width varies, so guess what? <laughs> it can even read my sloppy handwriting, but I don't, I want I wanna label this now. I wanna add this label, so I'm gonna insert that as a multi-leader, all right? So I can pick that berm, and I can move it over to here, all right? And it fades that back, all right? Now, again, I've got cleanup. I've got all kinds of things that I could go back and do. But one other thing I want to show you is you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily um, use the, what it gives you for the AI, right? So I could, I could select the markup and I could say, you know what? I want to update existing text. And I can pick that existing text right there and say that I want to append that to the end of it, right? Well, then I can simply, if if that was supposed to go away, then I can I can simply backspace that out and it's done, all right? So you can see how the AI is reading and is very high functioning um, and and makes it easier to do markups. Now, the workflow we just went through we started with the iPad app and, and bringing information in with that iPad app and 
overlaying uh, the markup that somebody had done on top of it. And then we open it up in AutoCAD and this, you could be across the world and open up this same file and you're going to see these traces, right? And you just simply select that trace and the AI finds all of your markups, all right? Now, when I shut this off or X out of it, then you see the changes that we made and you see this change we made. Uh, we've got things that are deleted here. If you ever want to go back to it, you can simply select it again, all right? And you wouldn't have to, to rerun it. You wouldn't have to select it again uh, to go to the back, uh, but you can, and it will show you and keep all of that information. Now, you could open up one of the other traces that are in there. So, like I said, there could be multiple sessions of red lines uh, that happen, and this happens all the time, so... Uh, it's a great way to keep track of what was redlined and what was physically fixed in the drawing. So you would hit save and you'd be off and running. Now, we've got about 13 minutes here. That's just enough time. All right, so one more thing I want to show you here, and I will go from this slide, is I want to talk to you about the Autodesk Assistant. Now, this... This was really amazing to me. I, I did not realize um, that it was what exactly it was doing. Um, but it is using AI to give you four different answers whenever you select and use it. Um, so it's it's basically an AI guided assistant. Okay. It offers self-service and options to find tailored support. So it's on here on the slide. Depending on the type of account you have, you can find solutions to product questions. You can actually engage in a chat with one of our product support agents, and you can request a callback, or you can create a support case directly from the assistant. Now, um, I'm going to show this to you here in just a second, but you can ask it anything, and it will give you four AI-generated um, suggestions of where you need to go. And then if you, it'll, it'll ask you again, I say, well, are, uh, do you need to see more suggestions? And you can tell it yes. And it'll give you four more. All right. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the show for here in just a second, because it's, it's actually, it's fantastic. So um, it is located in the upper right corner of the application window. So it looks like that right there. All right. So let's jump right in and let's look at the, AI assistant. All right, so I'll just stay in this AutoCAD drawing. If you look right up here to the right in the upper right hand corner, you can see the Autodesk assistant. I can select it and it comes up and starts to populate. All right, it shows you the time you started. It calls you by name. It knows that because of your account, but it tells you, you can say something like auto saves not working invalid file error how do i remove unused blocks you can ask it any question like that say so uh, let's we can keep it simple uh how do i uh draw a line <laughs> everybody should know how to draw a line but we can let it do a search all right and if, if you notice it'll show you the ai curated um answers all right, and it says that right here. It says, uh, here are AI created solutions or curated solutions from sources across Autodesk, okay? So create a line with multiple segments. Uh, have you tried joining 2D objects to draw lines? Um, the line command, all right? So uh, if I select the line command, it opens right up. This is coming from the help menu, all right? So it tells you and walks you through how to draw a line. Now, if you want to show more, you can, and it'll give you four more options, all right, about modifying leaders. So these are a little bit, they're not as as uh, tight as the, the original four that are there, but it's 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 pulling from information all over Autodesk. Now, if, if that wasn't helpful, this is where you can connect with an agent, all right? So you can say, yes, please, all right? And the... Autodesk Assistant will get you in touch 
with an with an agent if your account has that ability. All right. So I can with my access, I can have a live chat. All right. There's agents online all the time, or I can create a case directly here inside of the Autodesk Assistant. That is so much faster than trying to take it to somebody within your organization um, to, to create a case on something that can get answered very quickly this way. The live chat, I highly recommend using the live chat because you can select live chat. I'm not going to do it here. I don't want to bother our agents. But if you select live chat, it is instantaneous. It just opens up a live chat and allows you to talk to them um, and ask the questions. If they can't answer the questions, then you most likely would just go back and create a case, or they may offer to create a case for you. Now, if that is, uh, if you've got a new question, you can always restart the chat. All right. And it'll ask if you want to clear the history. You can just say yes. And it basically starts from scratch. Now, there's going to be a question, I'm sure. Um, is this in other products? Yes, it is. So AutoCAD is inside of Civil or, or it's Civil 3D is built on top of AutoCAD. So you have this same functionality inside of Civil 3D. Um, you also have this in Revit, but it is not in the same spot. Okay, so I am going to do this. I am going to actually fire up Revit here and I'll go to Revit 2024. And I will show you this real quick. It is also on our website. So autodesk.com. If you take a look here, all right, you have to let it uh, populate. You have to let it sit for a second, but it's not in the upper right-hand corner. It's down here. All right, this is the same type of AI, all right, inside of Autodesk Assistant, but it's asking you different questions. It's asking you, um, what, how can we help you find the software you need, right? How can I help with product selection, purchasing and support or connect you with an agent? All right. So it's, it's different questions, but you can still say, so I say, I want to select or buy software. All right. Um, I can put my question in here. Okay. And it's going to give me those AI generated answers. And again, if you, if, if you don't get the answer you want, or, or the answer that answers your question, then you can create a case or you can, I guarantee you, you'll be able to find somebody to contact you. All right. So inside of Revit, and then I will be done here. All right. If you, we're just, I'm just going to open up a Revit file here. This is one of the, it's actually one of the example files. Now, once this opens, and I believe... I remember right you hit f1 all right it'll take just a second here i picked a draw i picked of course i picked one that was that was big and it's going to take a second to open all right so it's almost there wait for it all right so i can hit f1 here all right and if you look you got to let it populate all right if you look right here there's your assistant, all right? You select that, and now the Autodesk Assistant is allowing you to ask questions about Revit, all right? It's just not in, it's just not contextual inside of the actual model space here or inside of Revit. Um, it's actually in the help menu itself. So that's all of our presentation. So let's jump into some Q&A. All right, guys, so we have ended our session here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at mscott at asti.com. We'd be happy to help you out. Thank you all. I have a wonderful rest of the day.